Okay. For Media Lit, your assignment this week, and probably going into next week, is to do the Radio Days project. And in order to access and understand that, we have to uh, open up the internet, and hopefully you went and saved or bookmarked my homepage, okay, which is the teacher webpage. If you had done, then you need to do so now by going to high school, teacher webpages, Mr. Banks. Now that you're here, go up to bookmarks and bookmark this page. You can name it anything you want, Mr. Banks' homepage, whatever you want, hit done, and when you do, it will be there in your bookmarks to make it easier. Scroll down to Media Lit, and let's enter the online site. Okay, Radio Days, a web quest. This is going to be our first major assignment that we're going to do. And what better way to do it than as a group? So as you do this, you need to decide what three members are going to be in your group. Because only three people can be in your group at the time. And this class so far has an equal number, so we should be fine with that kind of gives a background of what the radio thing is, or the assignment, and this is all you'll need really, as far as that, the PDF for the assignment itself, to kind of get going. Your netbook is going to be the tool that gets you there. All right, let's assume at this time that you have three people in your group. Notice that there are five pages on this PDF. You may go down this way, or type in page two, page three, page four to get there. You can increase or decrease size of the picture, however you wish. Just remember not to hit print because it's not going anywhere. We are not hooked up to any printer anymore. Everything's going to be digital. All right, so as we scroll down, you see the introduction. And essentially what it's telling you is that back during the, the 1920s into the 30s and then the 40s, radio was first invented and became a major form of entertainment, much like the television is now. Although television, even though still is a primary form of, of entertainment, our homes, computers, tablets, uh, a lot of mainstream technology is now moving its way to the forefront. Anyways, back then people would listen to their favorite shows and their programs, and these programs would come on just like a TV program would if you tune into uh, you know, any program that, that you might be interested in watching, but it only comes on on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Uh, or new, like, you know, uh, like with Degrassi, you have a new episode every week, and followed by usually the, the, the one that happened prior to that to kind of bring you up to speed. So here's the task you're going to be given, you and your other two team members. You're going to pretend that you work for a local radio station, and your boss, who must be very old, grew up during this golden age of radio, and as such, he's assigned you and your co-workers first the task of writing and producing a new radio drama. And your boss expects you and your co-workers to first do the research on the history of drama and use the knowledge to create your script for a new radio or suspense series. And he wants the script to contain references to sound effects, actors' dialogue, etc. In addition to the script, you and your team are to present a recorded demo version of this. Now, we are past the audio cassette. We are going to do a demo version of it, which is going to be in the form of an MP3. So, the process number one, and this is what you're going to be responsible for over the course of the next couple days. Each person in your group is to select from one of the positions, kind of like a job description. They can either be a playwright, a Foley artist, or an advertising executive. Now what the playwright does is his or her job is to actually design the script for the radio drama you are going to perform on the microphone. And even though the playwright is writing it, it is absolutely a must that the artist and the advertising exec have equal say in what is being written. In other words, all three of you are bouncing your ideas off each other and you are coming up with a solid storyline of entertainment together, but the playwright will be the one who creates it in forms of typing it out, making sure that it's formatted correctly, and spelled correctly, and submitted correctly on Moodle. The Foley artist, this is who I would like to refer to as your tech 
savvy individual. Somebody who has a really good idea of how to, how to edit, how to find sound effects, how to use technology appropriately, but you know, kind of a savvy to it. And so, as the playwright is creating the play, the artist has to pay attention to what things are going to be, what elements are in this play or in this uh, show, so that they can create the sound effects like the backdrop. You're outside, you may want birds, you may want uh, trees or wind or something uh, going on. If it's at night, you might want tickets. If you're walking you know, and, and you're on leaves, you may want to set on leaves. Or a dog barking. All the little things that would feed in a, a video that you take for granted, you cannot take for granted in basically an audio podcast because we can't see it, so therefore, the only thing that's going to spark the image in our minds is going to be what we hear coming on to the radio. So this Foley artist is exceptionally important in really bringing the graphic idea of what you are performing to the forefront. And finally, the advertising executive. As you know, every show has pauses in it. Usually every 12 to 13 minutes, there's the show, and then it stops. And then you have about 60 seconds worth of commercials. So for our purposes, you have exactly 60 seconds that you have to create either one commercial, which is an in-depth commercial, all right, or you may create two 30-second commercials, which means you have two 30-second commercials that you can put somewhere in your presentation. Now, how this works is depending on the playwright, and what you're writing about, who is your targeted audience? Is it kids? Is it adults? Is it old people? Is it younger kids? Whatever it is, that's where your advertising is going to be. No one's ever seen uh, during a cartoon Saturday for small kids a, an advertisement for uh, tampons or for anti-aging cream or something like that. Because little kids, they don't care about that. Why would they ever, you know, they don't buy it. What kind of things would they be watching? Watching, uh, they would be watching little things such as dolls, and they would be watching, uh, looking for toys. So essentially, you're going to have to go about finding that. Now, all the members of the group are expected to contribute to this, and how that's going to happen is once you've decided what you're going to do, step two is going to come into play, and this is what's going to take a couple days. Each group member is selected a job, so your job as a whole for all three of you is to research radio, the timeline from 1930 to 1945. And in doing it, anything of any significance that happened between 1930 and 1945 that was on the radio, that's what you include in a timeline. So what you'll have to do is minimize this. You'll have to open up a Word document. You could also create a timeline out of your PowerPoint, if you wish, or even Publisher. But I'm just going to show you a very basic uh, way to do it. If you go here and you click New, what you want to look for up here is you can search for the timeline. And Office will search for pre-formatted timelines that have been created. And as you can see, there's lots of different timelines that are available to you that you can choose from. All right, formats that have already been set up that you don't have to worry about setting up. They're already set up for you, and you just simply add to them. You download it. So let's say this is the timeline we want. We'll just call this radio era timeline. And We'll start from there. Now remember, you can copy this, you can copy these, and paste new ones on underneath it, okay? So it's very important to understand that so you have these things. And then you can just simply double-click in them and change the writing if you wish. It's really up to you. And you type in what's going on in it. And so you change the dates as well, and so you can have that. Here's how many I want. I want 25 different arrows showing basically events, events occurring, yeah. occurring during 
and <clears throat> this can be anything. It could be actors, famous actors who came on the scene, uh, buildings that were, you know, like the start of the Mercury Theater, World War uh, One that comes up here, uh, you know, uh, or I should say World War Two, not World War One, um, and uh, anything that, that has occurred. Fireside chat with the uh, with um, the president and once you have these saved you'll save these files and this is what you will upload to Moodle okay so anytime you're doing this here you're going to create a timeline and that's going to be your first order of business um, you may use PowerPoint publisher you may use another program if you want I really don't care but I just showed you a basic format on how to do it once we've done this then we'll move to step three, and I'll get to that later. Thank you, and good luck. If you have any more questions, just come up and ask me or raise your hand.